Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McCone. We begin in Charlton tonight where this evening Charlton police got a request from Southbridge police for help. They were chasing an erratic driver who was heading towards Charlton. Police were concerned the driver was drunk. The driver later collided with another vehicle and ran away. That's when Charlton police asked residents to shelter in place until they found him in a homeowner's front yard. Jackie Bruno has more. This is what an elderly couple in Charlton saw while watching their home surveillance system. A strange man running around their property on Carpenter Hill Road. I was watching him and my wife and his, he was very exhausted. To make matters worse, police had just asked the neighborhood to shelter in place after the suspect fled the scene of an accident. And all of a sudden it gives you the jitters. And I, I just locked everything up. He says his wife immediately called the police. They were here within minutes and uh, they apprehended him. No, uh, no problem. Everything was, everything was okay. Maureen Benenda is set to officially take over as superintendent of Worcester Public Schools. She'll assume the post next Tuesday after the school committee tonight unanimously votes to approve her contract. Her deal will run through June 30th of 2019. Benenda will be paid $190,000 a year with the potential for a 2% increase in both July of 2017 and 2018. The new superintendent must also live in Worcester throughout the contract. School committee member Brian O'Connell chaired the committee in charge of negotiating the new deal. Uh, certainly she brings to our school system a level of energy, enthusiasm, experience, talent, a focus on the needs of our community, bringing our community into our schools, and really an unwavering dedication to the welfare and the well-being uh, of the staff and of the students. Interim Superintendent Marco Rodriguez was running the Worcester School Department since the departure of Superintendent Melinda Boone. A historic day for the Worcester Police Department Thursday as eight members of the department are promoted. New Chief of Police Steve Sargent presided over the ceremony which took place at City Hall. Mayor Joseph Petty and City Manager Ed Augustus were also in attendance. The promotions included Captain Paul Saussier being named to Sargent's old position of Deputy Chief. Um, you know, I think the youngest person who uh, was promoted today has been on the job 18 years. So these guys have literally spent their entire adult life serving the city of Worcester. So seeing them move up into different ranks and levels of responsibility, I think, reflects the hard work that they've put in, but also the kind of people that we have serving us, people who are really dedicated to the job. Meanwhile, Kenneth Davenport was promoted to captain, becoming the highest ranking African American in the history of the Worcester Police Department. For me, I, th I think it just helps the department and the community because um, we're trying to reflect the community. And, and I think that's what's what the community wants to see. And so hopefully um, we, we keep on this, this path, this road that we're on, and you'll see even more uh, persons of color uh, gaining positions in these, uh, these higher ranks. That's a pretty big milestone. And uh, I think it, it says a lot about where we're going as a city and how our city is embracing our diversity and making sure we provide opportunities to all of our citizens. The cause of Sunday's double fatal fire in Northbridge is now known. State Fire Marshal says the fire on Border Street was caused by improper disposal of smoking materials. The investigation found the fire started on the couch in the first floor living room. It killed two young women in their 20s. The fire marshal also found there was not a working smoke detector in the home. The lieutenant governor in the city Thursday to take part in the Heroes Among Us annual meeting where a local man was honored for his contributions to Worcester. Jeffrey Rapucci took home the 2016 Brittany Gengel Humanitarian Award. Rapucci is the co-founder and president of the nonprofit Students Helping Children Across Borders, which aims to improve infrastructure in the U.S. and abroad. He also co-founded Working for Worcester, which recruits local students to help improve local parks. He's been quiet about what his accomplishments have been and what his contribution has been and um, the fact that he's in our community and he has done these amazing things for the city and that he's actually a hero among us is why we're recognizing him tonight. He's a young man that has gone beyond uh, helping young children um, by developing playgrounds, uh, bringing them, you know, uh, or getting them into uh, healthy practices. And he's done this all over the world. The Heroes Among Us annual meeting is put on by the Red Cross. Rapucci is a 2014 graduate of the College 
of the Holy Cross. Police departments across the state are stepping up efforts to make sure you wear your seatbelt. Patrols are out now enforcing the click it or ticket campaign. Our Olivia Lemon rode along with officers and has our story. I always knew the smart decisions to make were right from wrong and it was that one time. BJ Williams says he wasn't wearing his seatbelt when he was in a bad car accident and ejected more than 160 feet down the road. I suffered a traumatic brain injury, so I suffered from four skull fractures. According to the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, 26% of Massachusetts drivers do not wear their seatbelts, while nationwide, the percentage is only about 10. It greatly reduces the chance of them being injured in a car crash, even a minor crash. This month, police departments across the state are taking part in the Click It or Ticket campaign, paying special attention to make sure drivers are wearing their seatbelts. Since the seatbelt is a secondary enforcement, you use the primary minor motor vehicle infractions as a way to stop to make awareness. Lester police officer James Murphy says he's looking for drivers not wearing their belts, but also for drivers who may have expired inspection stickers or uninsured vehicles. In Auburn, Sergeant Daniel Lamoureux was looking for motor vehicle violations when he noticed a car without an inspection sticker. The driver was pulled over and eventually arrested because he was driving with a suspended license. These grants allow us to put an extra guy on the road um, looking just for traffic violations. It doesn't mean he's going to be giving out more tickets than normal. It just means he's going to be paying attention to traffic. For Williams, he has almost fully recovered 11 years after his accident. He says his mission now is to make sure everyone always wears their seatbelt. If one person can take away my story and not have it happen to them, it's, I, I, would, I would give anything for that to happen. Olivia Lemon. Worcester News Tonight. The Diocese of Worcester and Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church plan to seek permission to knock down the 88-year-old church within the next year. The diocese confirms both it and the church plan to seek a waiver from the city's historical commission. If approved, it would mean they could demolish the structure on Mulberry Street without having to wait 12 months. The church closed earlier this month, citing structural problems and costly repairs it could not afford group of parishioners is working on options to try to save the church. Home Depot partners with Veterans Inc. Thursday in an effort to improve the lives and homes of many veterans. More than 100 Home Depot employees volunteered their time to create a patio space at the Shrewsbury Independence Hall. Currently, 35 veterans are living in the facility. Home Depot has committed more than $130 million over the past five years to veteran projects. Brenda Heller says Veterans Inc. is thankful for their beautiful new patio. It's exerted from these folks. They volunteer their time. They don't get paid to do this, but they come out and they give everything they have. Our core values at the Home Depot is giving back to our community, and especially we have a mission of, of giving back to veterans. So this fit nicely into kind of what, you know, what we do day in and day out across the country for, you know, thousands and thousands of veterans everywhere. This is the 10th project partnership in the past four years for the Home Depot and Veterans Inc. A unique exhibition is coming to the Worcester Art Museum. Starting Friday, Wham! will showcase hundreds of local artists' interpretations of cats. Our Brittany Schaefer got a sneak peek of the exhibit called Meow and has the details for us. And it's all cats all the time, now all the way through the fall. This summer, the Worcester Art Museum has prepared their largest exhibition to date. Meow is a cat-inspired art exhibit and will be opening Friday. We have this great thing called the catwalk that takes you all around the museum, the, the artworks that were already on view that are cat-themed. Wham's Adam Roseanne says the main reason behind choosing this exhibit is the recent cat phenomenon. We work with the public, we work with partners, and we start thinking about projects that will really appeal to you, the public, right? And so the Meow is that exhibition. It's a, it's a public-focused exhibition. Artists' work from all around Worcester County are being showcased. There are more than 230 pieces of cat-themed art at Wham. I think this shows just how much the community loves and appreciates their own cats or just loves cats in general. I think having an exhibit that focuses around cats in Worcester really just solidifies how 
much of a presence animals have in people's lives and, and what that bond is like. Submissions ranged from five-year-old artists to someone who recently suffered a stroke and is learning how to paint again. There um, are some artists who are just showing their work of art for the first time who um, are just phenomenally talented and I'm so enthusiastic that their art is on the wall. Wham paired up with the Worcester Animal Rescue League for this exhibit. Part of the ticket cost will go directly to the shelter. I can't even put into words how exciting it is to be involved with this exhibit, be involved with the Worcester Art Museum and, and everything that's meow. There's so many facets to this exhibition that it's, it's phenomenal. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight.